All species will be gone and extinct. They now talk about from until 2050. The ocean's major species, fish, will be gone, missing, gone. We will have no more fish that we'll harvest out of the oceans. Now, who says that? Brian Clement? The good news is I don't have to be an expert on everything. There are people called marine biologists. There are people called oceanographic scientists. An overwhelming consensus, that means everyone agrees, just like everyone agrees with greenhouse gas except the oil companies. 2% of people disagree that all work for the oil companies, and 98%, by the way, say unanimously we agree with that. Well, the same thing with the oceans. It's 95.7%. There's a few con men that are being paid by somebody to tell you it's not true, but almost everyone totally agrees that the oceans will be fished out in the next 35 years. Now, how do you like that? Pretty good news, huh? Just because you can't see the problem doesn't mean it isn't there. So when I drive along a highway, I can see a steer, I can see a cow. If I look really close, look down, I can see a chicken. You know. But you can't see the fish. Unless you scuba dive, you can't see the fish. But the fish are going away. I've been scuba diving here in the state of Florida since 1960. And the radical difference in going under the water from 1960 until now, the beginning of the 21st century, is appalling. That's all I can say. It's beyond words. It's appalling. It's frightening. And I thought it was exclusive to coastal regions of continents like North America, South America. And I went out to the middle of the Caribbean, and I got a whole boat loaded with friends of mine. I said, we're going to see the greatest thing here in Jamaica. You're going to see the greatest reefs. And this goes back 12 years ago. And we went down, and the reefs were all dead 12 years ago. And there's oil that leaked in Australia. I never had the privilege to dive on the Great Barrier Reef, nor will I, because it's dying as we sit here, because they've pumped oil into that. And I can take you down here to South Florida, where I live, and show you the pipes with untreated sewage being pumped out into the ocean. I can take you to New York City and show you the barges of deadly chemicals, including syringe needles from hospitals, and all kinds of nonsense being dumped out in the ocean. And we sit here allowing this to happen, thinking there's some magical organization in the government that oversees all of this. There is. They're making sure it keeps going on. They're making sure that we keep this march towards destruction occurring. So let's talk about your favorite fish. Oh, I don't eat meat, I eat fish. Fish is a meat. It is among the deadliest things you can stick in your mouth and swallow. If you want to get sick, eat fish. If I didn't like you, and I'm not like that because I seem to like everyone, I would feed you fish. Let's put the health problems associated with eating aquatic life into perspective by reviewing the major threats, including food poisoning, mercury, PAHs, PCBs, etc. Now, we won't elaborate on this because we have a lot to talk about, but these are all the things that for sure. You may have noticed, if you live in a place like California, where several times every year they close the beaches. It's happening more and more. The Gulf of Mexico, which we're very close to one hour from the Gulf of Mexico here, uh, I will no longer sl swim in the Gulf of Mexico here because it is like a big cesspool ever since oil leaks happened and we totally wiped out that ecosystem for hundreds of thousands of years. The only way it's going to come back is if we go away, seemingly, and stop doing the insane things we're doing. And then maybe hundreds of thousands of years will go by and that ecosystem will come back. But they close beaches, shellfish. So uh, how many of you ever read that interesting book? It's the number one selling book in history called the Bible. Yeah, well, pretty interesting book. You know, a lot of people read it God knows how many billions of people read this book, and a lot of people take it very serious. They actually told you not to eat shellfish 2,000 years ago in that book. They knew something 2,000 years. Seemingly, we don't know now. The lobster restaurants don't know it. Nobody else knows it. And believe me, the shellfish then was pristine compared to the shellfish today, because once the Industrial Revolution occurred, and we started to dump 
everything into the ocean, and now we have seven and a half billion people dumping stuff into the ocean, but you don't do it, so you don't feel guilty, you let somebody do it for you. What the heck do you think's in the shellfish? The shellfish is the couch potato. The couch potato of the ocean. It's sort of the lazy guy that has the clicker that won't even move. And all the crap that falls down that we throw in there, it eats. And then you eat it and think it's fine cuisine? It's fine, okay. You know who it's fine for? The doctors, the hospitals, and the morticians. That's who it's fine for. Oh, this guy's extreme. Yeah, extremely knowledgeable about what you don't want to listen to. That's what I'm extreme about. If you don't get what I'm saying, man, you're not awake. It has never been a secret that food poisoning caused by seafood consumption occurs widely and frequently. Data in July of 2002, the International Journal of Food Microbiology in Australia research and said when they looked at all of the whole continent and country of Australia, they found high risk asse assessments done of all the aquatic life there. Of course, we all know about this. If you know nothing about nothing from nothing, you really know nothing. You basically know you got mercury and tuna fish, right? But that's the tip of the iceberg. Mercury and tuna fish is sort of like the good part of this story. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's only like scratching the surface on this stuff. So this doctor says it very well. She says, you know, they always con you into believing this is a great source of omega-3. It's also a wonderful source of saturated fat. Same thing you don't want to eat in steak and chicken and all this other stuff. But it has a little bit of omega-3. But again, where does the tuna fish get the omega-3? Starts with an A. Algae. Algae. <laughs> Algae. Okay. So Dr. Raj addressed another threat from mercury. She strongly warns pregnant and nursing women to avoid fish. Mercury exposure can seriously harm the development of fetus or young child. Now, how do we permit, how does your government, anywhere you are sitting listening to this in the world, permit a, quote, food, this is not a human food, onto the market that may harm permanently Forget the woman who is foolish enough to eat it. Permanently, the brain and the body of a child. So that child may be developmentally ill their whole life. They may be a burden not only on the family, but on the society and the culture. So because we're allowing this deceptive industry to make a few bucks, we are willing to take the burden of maybe millions of euros or dollars over a lifetime of a person who's dysfunctional because they have neurotoxins that we are permitting in the food. And this, again, is the easy part of the story. What are PAHs? Well, these are really abundant. When they look at fish all over, I was reporting in my book, Killer Fish, a study that was done that even stunned me. They assumed that in Europe and the coastal regions of England and Ireland, you'd have the most toxic fish, of course, because it's close in proximity to humans. Wherever is close to us is the most toxic, emotionally, physically, every other way. They went 200 miles out into the North Sea, and they tested the fish, and the fish were swimming 200 miles offshore, were more toxic, listen closely, more toxic than the ones eating the sorge that's being punched out of the major cities on the coastal areas. Why? Because now we have such a high level of universal systemic pollution that the way the currents move may actually pull together, coagulate for a oh, picture you can get, these toxins and make it even more dangerous hundreds of miles off coast than where we're actually putting the sewage out. In 2006, Spanish researchers discovered that 16 different types of these deadly chemicals were present in numerous species, including salmon, swordfish, mackerel, tuna, sardines, and shrimp. Females of all ages are more susceptible to these chemicals and contract cancer at a higher rate from exposures. So sure, we have the developmental problem, but now cancer, which those of you that are in the room listening to me and those of you listening worldwide, are in a society and a culture where over half of us will contract some form of cancer. Now, let me put it in perspective. If we go back 100 years ago, 
Less than 3% of the population had cancer. We come up to today. 57% of Americans and approximately over 50% of people, and we are not even addressing this. I am sure that nobody in this room has ever, ever been told what I'm telling you now, and I'm sure that 99% of you listening to me worldwide have never heard this, and this is a blazingly deadly issue. Deadly. Again, as I said, mercury is fun compared to this. We go to PCBs, you may have heard of those because, you know, we put them in plastic pipes and you know, the water you're drinking may have that in it and uh, they caught some of the bottled water companies using some of those and, you know, the list goes on. It's craziness. When absorbed by fish and humans, PCBs are fat-soluble compounds that persist in fat tissue. So the more heavy you are, guess what? If you were like I was, overweight and obese, and eating nothing but chicken, eating nothing but fish, nothing but steak, nothing but fried food, nothing but dairy, nothing but ice cream, nothing but milk. Can you imagine what my fat tissue had in it? <clears throat> so these PCBs cause cancer, and some of these compounds can cause neurotoxicity and endocrine disruption. Endocrine disruption is hormones. Why, 70% of women today, not in total, it's lack of selenium and iodine, have thyroid problems, cell phone use, thyroid problems. 70% of women worldwide today in the developed, rich world have this. But in part, large or small, depending upon how much aquatic life you consume, this also causes endocrine system. Thyroid is part of the endocrine system. But so is your lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system is where your immune system is locally. So if you're eating these ungodly non-foods that humans should never have ever touched, now they have the added attraction of industrial waste in it. No wonder we get lymphatic cancers. No wonder we get liver cancers and pancreatic cancers and lung cancers. And that's why 25% of people with lung cancer today have never smoked. They may be eating fish. But nobody equates this because the research is not paid for by companies that want you to eat plants. They're paid for by companies that want you to eat deadly non-foods and companies that basically give you medicines after you get sick. That's who funds the studies.